In the midst of a climate and biodiversity emergency, it's good to know there are some green spaces left, but they are few and they're being swamped by development. All over the country, farmland and wild spaces are being turned into industrial parks and housing estates. This kind of land conversion is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. It's also the single biggest cause of biodiversity loss. According to the Environment Agency, England is one of the most nature-depleted countries in the world. There's very little natural landscape left. Scientists from universities to the United Nations warn we face catastrophe. Here in Carlisle, there's a good example of how we're losing our natural spaces. In 1352, King Edward III granted a gift of wild land to the city. It's known to this day as Kingmore. Local residents have long enjoyed this easy access to nature. But after nearly 700 years, and in spite of the city council declaring a climate and biodiversity emergency, Portions have been sold off to developers. Only two small pieces of wild land remain. The final nail in the coffin is the construction of 80 new build houses right in its heart, a meadow the locals have long called Deer Park. This is a story of how councils, the planning system, and developers with their financial and legal muscle seem to conspire against the interests of both nature and residents. John Duncan has been walking here for years. He used to work in the nearby railway sheds. So the staff were using the field, which they've always done, to clock on, because the clock box was right next to the field. John and his wife Pat have lived here since 1968. The SME steam shed was fully operational. Oh, why? The it, men used that. It's a walking route. Uh, they used to take the upper path in the winter because... The other one was really muddy. And John got the path made into a public footpath in 2008, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Like many local residents, Anne Gadsden found the meadow helped keep her going during the Covid lockdowns. We came in the main entrance and we walked through the middle of the field so you can then either go left into the nature reserve or another favourite walk was going down that avenue of trees that takes you up to what was the old house that was there. But these customary routes have been blocked off. Councillor Helen Davison has been leading the fight to preserve the meadow. And this, this area, I say, was utterly teeming with orchids. We got an ecologist to come and do sort of a biodiversity blitz on it, and he's, he found over 100 species, and that wasn't all of them. The biodiversity was so important to residents. Yeah. This sort of yeah. rough land with yeah. orchids and, and that's developed in the way it has is now really rare because it's all been built upon. It's bioabundant. And that's what we need in this time of biodiversity loss. It's right next to um, a nature reserve, which has already been damaged by the that, um, industrial estate being built there. And then we've got the nature reserve just over there. And actually this field is part of that nature corridor. Yeah, yeah. But the orchids and hedgerows with their nesting birds and colonies of bees have gone already. Between April and June, when it's nesting season, and Gleasons came here and they chopped it down. An old oak, an ash tree, and a rare cut-leaf hornbeam are slated for destruction too. Um, and, and, and the tree was sort of part of the scenery and they've, they just chopped it out. Declaring an emergency means the council is supposed to reference climate and nature in all the decisions they make. Yet they seem powerless to stop the destruction. Which is just one of the examples of how the whole system, system is utterly rotten. There are many who would argue that a planning system that leaves city centres abandoned, climate change unchecked and nature depleted is not fit for purpose. Housing developments like this give a double blow to climate change. Each new build gives rise to around 60 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions, and on top of that every household will emit another 12 tonnes or more every year. On the other side of the equation, the loss of natural vegetation reduces the amount of carbon dioxide sequestered. If you wanted to offset this, you'd need to plant 40,000 extra trees. But even that would do nothing to counter the biodiversity loss. With the latest census figures showing little growth in the population, some question whether there really is a housing shortage. 
Yet, another 16 new housing developments are under construction in Carlisle alone. The whole point of cutting our emissions and reining in our consumer lifestyle is to restore the balance of nature. But it simply can't be done if we continue to destroy it. It's a precious um, community amenity. People have been using this field for years and years from the local community. And it's been full of wildlife and people have been teaching their children about wildlife in here, um, walking in there here for recreation purposes. Um, there's so many reasons why this particular field should not be built upon. The benefits of access to nature have been well documented. Green spaces keep us healthy, they keep us sane, and they keep us alive. For a county like Cumbria, with its reputation for environmental stewardship, it's particularly disappointing. We're heartbroken, but, it, you know, they call it progress, but is it really progress? The irony of calling a housing estate Deer Park begs to be tested for greenwashing against the Green Claims Code. The world faces twin catastrophes of runaway climate change and the collapse of the global ecosystem. There will be no point crowing about house construction when there's no one left to live in them. It's not hard to know what to do to preserve nature. Just leave it alone. I'm Steve Shelley, and this has been one of my Climate Insights.